Well, good morning, South Nashville family. We're so excited that you're here. If you're joining us for the first time, we just want to extend a special welcome. If you're joining us with our online family, we're so excited that you decided to log on with us. So just come on and lean in, make yourself at home, and we're going to go after the Lord in, in our worship this morning. I want to share this with you. Psalm 66 says, make a joyful shout to God all the earth. It says, sing out honor of his name, make his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your works. Through the greatness of your power, your enemies shall submit themselves to you and all the earth shall worship you and sing praises to you and they shall sing praises unto your name. Selah. Come on, did you come with a praise in your on your lips this morning? Did you come ready to lift up the Lord this Amen. morning? Come on, can you wave your hand if you if you came with a with a praise in your spirit? Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, we're gonna sing the doxology. It says, Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Hallelujah. Let's sing that. So praise God from whom all blessings flow. of the Lord one more time. Say amen. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's invite his presence in here this morning. We have a scripture this morning that, that my brother's going to bring to us. May the Lord bless his word this morning. Good morning and happy Sabbath. It is now time to read scripture and I will give you a slight moment to gather your Bibles, your, your phones, your laptops, computers, whatever you have. Uh, today, we will be reading scripture from Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 20. I'll uh, read in your hearing. And verse 10 says, Finally, my brethren, he's strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the, the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. 
Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having a breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of the peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all your prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Last verse, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I may ought to speak. May God have a blessing to the reading of his word. Good morning, and we thank you for joining us today at South Nashville Seventh-day Adventist Church. For those who are uh, coming to the church today through the audience, welcome. For those who's, who are online, welcome. We thank you for just joining us today. At this time, we're going to give you an opportunity to help us to minister outreach and in reach by spreading God's gospel. You can give through our online giving through South Nashville SDA, uh, org website. You can also give through Cash App at dollar sign South Nashville SDA. We also have PayPal at S O N A S H 7 day at yahoo.com. You are also able to mail in your tithe and liberal offering to 244 Tusculum Road, Antioch, Tennessee. 37013. These are just many ways that you can um, give to help us to spread the gospel of the Lord through outreach and inreach. Let us pray at the moment as we are giving the offering. Heavenly Father, we thank you just for your word, Lord. We thank you for life. We thank you for the opportunity to give back to you what you have given us to us. You ask for us to give back 10% and a love offering. So as those, we thank you for those who are able to give and wanted to give. And let these funds uh, be spread to the outreach of this community and the inreach, Lord, to be able to uh, continue on in this world, Lord. We thank you for what you've done, what you're doing, and what you're going to do. We bless your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. It's the portion of the service where we come to God to cast our, our cares on him and pray and seek him and intercede. Uh, before we turn the uh, prayer service over to pastor, we're going to sing this song, Here I Am to Worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you are my God. Come on. on you, Lord. Come on and move how you want to move, Jesus. Oh, here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say
Father in heaven, with all of the fears and frustrations we are faced with today, all of the trouble, Lord, and anxiety, we come before you now to make our petition known unto you, that we need you, Lord, to hold our hands and to walk with us and talk with us. We pray, Lord, that you will receive us today as we come into your presence. That we may hear and understand, Lord, what you're saying to us and what you're doing through us. We need strength, power. We need wisdom and understanding. We need the Holy Spirit to lead God and direct our lives as we work and wait on your second coming. Bless us today, we pray, Lord, that we may give you the best that we have, all of the praise and the honor, everything, Lord, that we have received, uh, been blessed with, we give you the glory. We love you, Lord, and we know that you love us. And so we are here today to say thank you. Thank you, Father, for everything you've done. There are so many of our people today are at home or in the hospitals, sick with COVID in other areas. But Lord, we just pray that you will extend your arms of mercy out and touch them all. Let them know, Lord, that even though we're in this world and it's a sin sick world, but you are still in charge of the lives of the people who trust you. And we lift up to you today, Lord, those are our members, families that are sick. We lift up to you today our pastor and his family and all of the other families, Lord, that are represented here. Lord, we pray that your hands of mercy will touch them all. Touch them, Lord, in ways that but let them know that you're there, and that you will not leave them and not forsake them. And as we are here praying for them, we pray, Lord, that our spirits will be lifted too. Because some of us have come this morning, Lord, and we're not at our best. Some of us come this morning limping and aching, and Lord, we have all types of problems and situations going on in our lives so we are here today to worship you because we know Lord that if we hold on to your unchanging hand that you will see us through and so as we worship you in spirit and in truth in songs and in words and scriptures and whatever we however we worship you today Lord please receive us because we do it in a in the pleasant in the sacred name of Jesus. And for his sake we pray. Amen and amen.
We serve the God who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh with us. We thank you, Jesus. Hey. Let's sing this together. God is able to do just what he said he will do. He is going to fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, because he won't give up on you. He's able. Springtime and harvest, 
Oh, the sun, moon, and stars in their courses above join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Sing great. Great is thy faith. Come on, deep note. Hey, great is thy faithfulness. Morning. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. been faithful church oh great is thy faithfulness lord unto me come on can you clap your hands if he's faithful he's faithful and he's able this morning hallelujah jesus hallelujah, hallelujah. we believe god Lord, we thank you that you have the final say. You're so worthy, Jesus. They say this mountain can't be moved. They say these chains will never break. But they don't know you like we do. There is power in your name. We've heard that there is no way through. We've heard the tide will never break. They haven't seen what you can do. There And you are the way when there seems to be 
We believe for it. No matter what the doctor says, we believe. We believe. You're a miracle worker. God, we believe for it. You're a healer. You move mountains, Jesus. You're holy, so holy. sing it one more time. Yeah. Can we sing that chorus one more time? I dare you to stir your faith up Come today. On now. Oh, there's so much going on in the news and so much negative things out there, but I dare you to believe that God gets the final say. Amen. Yes, he does. Amen. I don't care what the doctors say. I don't care Amen. what the teachers say. I don't care what your child is doing. He gets the final say. Amen. He is a mountain mover dare you to sing this with all your heart and watch him move it. Watch him move it. That thing that has seemed so solid in your life, it's not going anywhere. But I dare you to lay it at the feet of Jesus and watch him move it out of the way. Can we sing it one more time? Move the immovable. Break the unbreakable. God, we God, we believe for it. From the impossible, we'll see a miracle. God, we believe, yes, we do. God, we believe for his hallelujah. right there just make your place an altar right where you stand come on invite him in invite him in he's here he's here he's here he's here he's in the room he's in the room hallelujah jesus god i stand on your word we believe for it are you believing for for god for anything right now in this season Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be answered. We trust you, Jesus. We're going to sing a new song this morning, but it's a beautiful declaration. It just simply says, God, you are worthy of it all. Come on, how many, whose who's song is that this morning? God, you are worthy of my worship. All I have in me, you are worthy.
the elders, all the elders cast their crowns before the Lamb of God and sing. You're worthy, you're worthy of it all. You're worthy of it all. For from you, for from you.
Come on, lift your voice. You deserve it. All of my worship, you deserve it. You deserve it. Because my hallelujah belongs to you. Oh, one more time. Sing my hallelujah belongs to says all of the glory watching on Zoom and, and all, but it is another thing when you're actually in the presence of the witnesses. This has been a blessed morning so far. I want to thank God for this calling through our pastor. I never turned down an invitation to be a witness for the Lord. I believe that God has raised us up in times like these in order to give strength and support to those who are not feeling so well, those that are going through changes and even unnecessary problems. There are many people that are really hurting today, even in our churches, and they need us, and they need a word from the Lord because sometimes there are those who are up at two or three o'clock in the morning wondering if I could just get a word from the Lord, if somebody could just say something to me that would build my strength and, and my courage up. A little bit. So I want to thank God today for our pastor for extending to me this invitation. My wife and I, we were already coming to church today. Uh, we've been out and about and then of course during the Christmas holidays we we came down with that COVID and I tell you that is nothing nice. But then there are a lot, a lot of people battling that thing right now, and they need our prayers and support. So we want to make sure that we do that. And I know our pastor is not with us today, but he's watching. And so we just want to give a shout out to our pastor. We want to say to him to just hold on, and we're praying for him and his family. Amen. Amen. So won't you bow your heads with me just for a moment, Father? I plead right now that you will receive me as I stand before you and your people. 
and then bless me and bless them with the word through me today that they can leave here with rejoicing knowing that they have been with the Lord and so Lord as I attempt to speak the words that I believe you have impressed upon my mind to speak that we would all be blessed today and we thank you for hearing and answering our prayers in Jesus name Amen I do want to say, though, South Nashville, we have really missed you all. Yeah, we've been away. It's been, it's been a long time. It's been almost three years since this thing really happened. And I see a lot of people not here today, and I don't know why, but I have an idea. But I'm going to make an appeal to all of the people that are not here for whatever reason to come back home. It's time to come back. Yes, 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 yes. We, 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 we've had a break now. And it's too long. We need you. Amen. We need you. So men, come on back. Women, come on back home. Amen. Well, the scripture has been read, so I'm not going to read the scripture anymore. But just before I get into the message, I just want to say a few things to the Lord. So just pause with me just for a quick moment. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. The story was told about a young man who refused to crumble under pressure. The year was 1607 that marks a gray spot in the American history. It was when the first American colony was set up in Jamestown, Virginia. During this spot of history, 1607, they brought with them a concept that they had been practicing all along called slavery. And let me share with you the situation of a young man who found himself in a crisis on a plantation. Young man, about 21 years of age, refused to bow down to the master. So he suffered severely from the master's torture. He was burned in, with hot oil and hot water, and he was whipped with the whip, woven with weaved with steel and glass. And because he would not bow down, he was whipped and actually uh, totally abused. One day, the master went around the plantation asking all of the people, why is it that this young man would not bow? Well, bravely and boldly, the, an old man stood up and he said to the master, he said, master, I know why this man won't bow down to you. When the master asked him why, he said, because back in his home, where he lives, his daddy is a king. And the child of a king does not bow down to anybody. Amen. Wouldn't it be good if we could just get that into our spirits today, that we are children of the king and we will not bow down to Satan or anything in Satan's world. We will not bow down to COVID. We know that it is raging in our families, in our homes, but we will not bow down to you. We're going to come together even if we've got to come in mask. We're going to come together even if we're at the six, six feet apart. I don't care what the situation is. We are going to overcome this thing, Satan. You are not going to take us out with this COVID. There's a God. Amen. There's a God in heaven. There's a God 
on earth because the Holy Spirit is here with us. That, and, and he gives us the strength and the power and the will to move forward. And we will not break unless he says so. Amen. There's a little poem I'm going to read just for a second. It's only just a short two or three words. My soul is so happy in Jesus the Lord. He comforts my spirit with songs in the night. The joy of salvation in him I possess, and I walk with him day and night until death, standing on his promises. We have been created, church, in his image to reflect the moral and personal nature of God, according to Genesis 1, 26. However, sin marred that image, but we are accepted because Jesus gave his life for our redemption. And I thank God for that. You remember when God said, let us make man in our image. And when he said, let us make man, then he said, and let them have dominion. So I didn't understand that for a while, but God knows what he's doing. And he knew that a man alone could not handle this task. So he had to make a woman to help him. And the woman was partly in him already. Because when God put him to sleep, he took the rib and then formed the woman around that so they could be connected. So church, when we said... Lord, I will do whatever. That means we were connected. So now we are a family, and we need to start acting like it. Amen. Amen. So then we as Christians should feel good about ourselves. No one is more blessed, and no one can be happy as we can because we have chosen, amen, to show the devil and all of his angels that no matter how rough the, the, it gets or it seems, he's not going to change our direction. We are going to stay loyal to the purpose for which God created us. And God created us to worship him. Amen. That's why God delivered the, Egypt, Egypt, the Hebrews out of Egypt, because he wanted them to worship him. See, if Satan had known anything about God's personality, he would have let the Hebrews go a long time before Moses went there. But he didn't understand how angry God gets when someone stands in the way of a worshiper. If you want a problem with God, then you stand in the way of a worshiper. Amen. And so when God got ready to move his people, he moves Egypt out of the way so that his people could walk out of Egypt. And that's what God is doing for the devil right now. God is reconciling the world unto himself, church. And those of us who are watching what God is doing, we can see that God is really moving Satan out of the way so that we can shine through. You see, the word Christian is the covering of our lifestyle. The Christian life has boundaries. The standards warns us to avoid immoral activities, immoral activities that the world considers foreign. You know, there, 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 there's a fun and game in this thing that people want us to be a part of, but there are just certain games that we can't play. Amen. Certain places that we just can't go. However, we can still have fun in the Lord. There are certain things that we can do, amen, that God will bless. Now, we are to stay true to our gifts and our calling. Your gift will complete your life. If you get in one place and you just stay there, God will bless you. Sometimes we're not blessed because we move around too much. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we're not blessed because we're here a little and there a little. Sometimes we're not blessed because we will not allow the Holy Spirit to do his job. You see, there are times when we want the Holy Spirit to change what God has already set in place for us. 
So we'll say to the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, we pray to the Holy Spirit. We ask the Holy Spirit to do things for us. When Jesus has said to us, don't ask the Holy Spirit, don't pray to him, because he's not going to do anything for you that God has not told him to do. So if you're talking with the Holy Spirit, you're wasting your time. you got to talk to God, our Father which art in heaven. Send your Holy Spirit that he may speak to me or tell me what to do or tell me how to get things done. And then that's what the Holy Spirit does. In the mornings when you wake up and you're on your way to work, you pray before you leave home, God, send your spirit today that he may help me to navigate my way to work. And when you get in your car and you start toward your job, then the Holy Spirit keeps you from getting in an accident. The Holy Spirit keeps you from being shot as you are driving to work and you don't know who's riding in the car next to you because the windows are dark and, and you can't see the person. And for God's sake, uh, for goodness sake, do not get involved in any road rage. And that's what the Holy Spirit does. He keeps you from all of that stuff so that you can arrive there on time. Amen. No lies. You can't mislead people. Tell the truth and save a life. Stand. No change. People are counting on you for direction. You know, it doesn't matter how poor you are. It doesn't matter how rich you are. It doesn't matter how fat you are or how skinny you are. There is somebody watching you. There's somebody who's saying, I would like to be like that person. You may not understand it. But when you fall, that person will fall with you. When you rise up, that person will rise up with you. There's always somebody watching you. So when you are discouraged and thinking all is lost, fix your eyes on the cross and thank God for giving you all that he had. And so South Nashville this morning, you see the church, amen, this is a movement, and we are approaching the end of this world. But there will be a Sabbath celebration before we move into the new world. So it is very important to you to know your purpose in life. Because if you don't know your purpose in life, then the chances are you will not make it home. Understand your purpose. Amen. And so, there was a great philosopher, Socrates, who made a statement one time that I will quote, an unexamined life is not worth living. His meaning was the human life is deprived of meaning and purpose of existence. We have lost our purpose of existence. We are not really where God wants us to be. But thank God we are working on getting there. The thing is, we need a little more encouragement. We need people to encourage us. When you slip, that's all right. Get up and keep moving. You see, we are too quick to put people down. Church folk, we are too hard on people in this life. You see, we are trying to make people live a life that we've never seen lived before us. Amen. Uh, let me share with you uh, that a good marriage today, amen, is only good because you have received the Holy Spirit and God is the glue that keeping that marriage together because, church, we have never in this world seen a good marriage. Amen. Adam and Eve created perfect but they fell before we got to see a good marriage. Amen. So we've never seen one. So if you are in a good marriage today, give God the glory because nobody saw that coming. Only God can give you that. Amen. We have never seen a good man or a good woman or a good person because Adam and Eve fell before they had a chance, before we got a chance to see them in action. Amen. And so we need to stop, amen, we need to stop dogging our people out because they stumble or they fall because we've never seen anybody standing up straight. Even when you look down the road and you see the great Abraham, he went, amen, into a place where he was not supposed to go. 
and came out with the problem. Amen. All of those, those, those great leaders who went on before us, church, they were all full of problems. And God does not hide his frailty, uh, the, the frailties of the men that he uses in his service from us. You take people like Moses. Moses led the people of, of Israel all the way to the border of the promised land, but he could not go across because he struck the rock instead of speaking to it. A amen. Abraham was the father of the faithful. The Bible says he was the father of many nations, but he had a child out of wedlock, and it went, well, 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 he, he committed adultery and messed up. And all of those people, David was a great person. He was a warrior. He was a fighter. David would hurt you. David would kill you. David was the man who was the boy who stood before Pharaoh, before uh, Goliath, and said, I'll kill him. It was David, not Saul. It, it wasn't the older folk. It was the young people. And so now, church, if you notice, we have actually, we have, we have weakened our young folk now so they don't stand up in the power of God. You know, we've, we've taken away the, the MV department. That was, that was, that was in, that, that was one of the avenues that the young people were holding on to, amen, back in the day. The MV was the, was the avenue that was bringing the kids to church and had them hanging around the church, learning how to serve God and how to become disciples and how to make disciples out of other children. And then the AYS, amen, been shot in the leg because the parents stopped bringing their children to AY. But yet we are saying to the children, you got to do what God says. You got to do right. You got to do good. You got to be this and be that so you can make it to heaven. So we are pushing our children to heaven, but we are shooting them in the leg. Amen. See? So we are not doing what we are supposed to do with our children to help make disciples out of them so that they can help to make disciples out of others. Choir rehearsals on Friday nights. Amen. You see, there was a time when our children used to hang out at the church on Friday. They couldn't wait until sunset to get to the church. And they would have choir rehearsal. And then after choir rehearsal, they would stand in the parking lot. And they would fellowship. And they would have a good time on Friday night dealing with Sabbath issues. Amen. But we stopped it. So we don't have that anymore. So now... They're at home with the cell phone, some in the basement, some in the attic, some in the bedroom, some everywhere. Amen. Amen. And, and you don't have an idea what they're watching or what they listen to because they got plugs in their ears so you can't hear the songs. Amen. And they know how to shut things off when you walk in. Or they don't even have to let you in anymore. They can say, no, I don't want you in my room. Now, 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 they didn't pay for that room, but, amen, but they claimed that room. Yeah, amen. See, and so now we're saying, but, but, but God, but God, but God, but if it's so much, but God, why are we allowing them to run our home? Why are we allowing them to become the mother and the father and we become the children? They are telling us what they're going to do and what they're not going to do. Amen. And so, and, so, and so the purpose of God has been marred. The purpose of God is not where we are now. We spend more time fighting and trying to correct each other in the church than we are on the outside. Amen. We are always down on somebody in the church. It's like we are sin seekers. We are running around looking and trying to find out who's doing wrong and who's doing bad and who's falling and who's not getting up. And, and, and if you come up in the church, and I know when I joined this church, oh, I was happy. I came up in this church, I was jumping and, and shouting, but a few years later, I walked out limping and hopping and saying, well, you know, so, so when you come in the church on fire, somebody going to put some water on you. You know, you know, church, the one thing that I, I, I have seen that you can't not be a slave for God anymore. 
You can't be a fanatic for God because people won't let you. Oh, now you're holier than thou. If you try to tell somebody what they said the Lord today, they'll say that, oh, you're judging me. Even in the church when people know what the word of God is saying, but yet because they don't want to live it, they'll say, you're judging me. Stop judging. But if you tell me what the Bible says, you're not judging me. You're telling me what thus said the Lord. And I need to get my house in order. Amen. So, church, we got some work to do. Amen. Um, we find ourselves now in the midst of signs and warnings and judgment because the returning of our Redeemer draws near. And all hell is breaking loose. This disease is raging in our brethren, and, and the political world is crumbling like rusty pipes, and prejudice behavior and, and nepotism and bad relationships are destroying the church. So, if there was ever a time for discipleship in the church, it's now. And, I, and, and, and as I actually travel around from place to place, I have seen with my own eyes that we have forgotten how a Christian is commanded to walk in the ways of God. We don't, we don't do right anymore. And we don't care for the most part. Not everybody, but I'm just saying as a whole, we got it wrong. We have walked away from God. So let's start trying to be more uh, understanding and acceptable of people and build the people up rather than tearing them down. Amen. You know, Jesus said, I came that you may have life and you may have it more abundantly. But Satan came to kill, steal, and destroy. And that's what he's doing. And we see it happening right before our very eyes. Amen. He's killing the church. He's killing families. He's killing marriages. He's destroying everything in his pathway. He's like a tornado or a hurricane. Or, or, or it just, it's when, when, when he comes through, when he passes by, you can see the results. And then we call on God, oh, God, fix me. We go out there a little bit. See, and Satan, what he does, he baits you. He's, he's a bait and he's a switcher. So he'll bait you and then he switches. Amen. So he'll, he'll lure you in. He'll, 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 he'll try to get you so close to him. He, you know, he'll, he'll just talk to you. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You can go out with me tonight. You can go. Come on, you can have a little drink. Come on, you can, you can, you can do this. Come on. Uh, and, 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 you, and he lures you in. And he lures you in. And before you know it, he has you. Because you remember what he said to Peter? Peter, Satan has desired to have you. He has desired to have you. That he may sift you as wheat. So Satan got to have you before he can sift you. So if Jesus doesn't let him have you, then he can't sift you. And you can't stop him on your own because you don't have the power to do that. But thank God, Jesus said, but I prayed for you. And isn't it good to know that God is praying for us? Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father praying for his children. Thank God that he's praying for us because we cannot do it by ourselves. You see, church, there are two things that I'm going to speak a little bit on and then we're going to go. One of them is the Sabbath. The Sabbath is the second sign of the way home or the avenue by which we get us home. The Sabbath is the second one. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Now, the first one is love. Amen. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, and all thy mind, and all thy strength. So if you love God like that, then you'll love me. But if you don't love God, you can't love me. Amen. And if I ask you, do you really love me? Most of you right now will say, oh, yes, brother. Oh, yes, brother Robinson, we love you. But then if I say, well, how did you know you loved me? You probably couldn't answer. You know why? Because most of us say, well, I love you from the bottom of my heart. But that's not always a good thing because the Bible says a man's heart is desperately wicked. Amen. So if you're loving me from the bottom of your heart, I don't know if I want that. Amen. Amen. 
but I want you to love me because Jesus is in you. And Jesus' love is coming through you, and it's flowing down on me. And then I know that you love me. Amen. Because we can't love anybody, church. We don't have the power, the will, nor the fortitude. We don't have what it takes to love anybody. But we can do it through him, and we're supposed to be making discipleship out of people right now. That's our purpose for being here. Um, since this COVID hit, we have seen, we have seen a breakup in the family. We have seen um, uh, people killing themselves and people destroying themselves. We've seen relationships break up and marriages fall apart, all because of COVID. Now, I'm going to say this because I believe that God allowed this thing to happen to us for a purpose. I'm not going to say that God brought it on us. I don't know. But I'm going to say that God allowed this to come. And the reason I believe that God allowed this to come is because, church, I think we were kind of getting out of order. And God had to bring some order back into our lives as Christians. I believe that some of us were spending two, three, four hours getting ready to go to church. Amen. Putting on the best that we have. Amen. To get the glory once we get to church. And when we get to church, in about an hour, we're ready to go home. So God was not getting the glory. We were getting the glory. Now, I say that because if, now, we, now, if I try to sing a song right now, you all will receive me. Amen. If I try to sing a solo up here. So you all will receive me now because of all the crisis that go on around. And you'll say, sing it, Pastor. I don't care how I'm breaking in my, my notes and how I'm, I'm just not on key. Y'all say, it's all right, Pastor. We got you. But if I had come up in here and tried to sing in the year 2019, before COVID hit, and I tried to sing a little song, y'all say, oh, Lord, uh, oh, Jesus. Now, I am singing to the glory of God, but you all wouldn't accept that, you know, because you want the best. You know, you want the, you want the, 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 the higher calling. You want the people from the upper echelon. You don't want no poor person who can't sing well, can't control his voice to be singing in your church. How many times have we put our people back in the corner who want to sing, want to pray, want to preach, want to talk, and will pay somebody a thousand dollars or so to come from the outside just to sing a song or say a word of encouragement? What I'm saying is God allowed this COVID to come in order to get us back in order. It's not about you. It's not about you. God says it's about me. I don't care what you wear. When you get to church, take it off or whatever so that you won't stand in front of me. When you come to church, I want the people to see me through you. Amen. Don't stop hiding me. Stop coming in with all of your, all of your, your, your possessions and all of your stuff. I, I want to see your heart, and I want the people in the church to see me. So ministers and people who are singing and people who are listening, God wants to save us. And I think we have gotten a little bit off base. So thank God for COVID. Now, some may say, Pastor, I don't believe you said that, thank God for COVID. But the Bible says thank God for everything. He said, give thanks for everything. It didn't just say the good times or, the, or your paycheck or your job. It said for everything, so even the bad time, give God some thanks. Because there's a reason for the bad time. There's a reason for the flat tire. There's a reason you run out of gas. There's a reason you got sick. There's a reason you got COVID. There's a reason you got a problem. There's a reason you got, my wife said, Last night, she was laughing to herself, she was reading something, and somebody said, you know, I never thought I would ever reach the wonder years. 
you know, I, I thought about them, but I never thought that I would reach the one of years. And now here I am wondering if I'm going to be able to get up in the morning, wondering if another pain going to hit me in the back somewhere, wondering if my Maypop tire is going to last me long enough to get to work, wondering if my car is going to break down or not. We're in the wonder years right now because we are not sure of anything. Amen. Amen. So, church, as I wind down a little bit, there are some things that we need to really deal with in our lives. Number one is don't be ashamed of the gospel. Don't be ashamed. If you don't know how to control your voice, sing anyway. Amen. Amen. I felt good this morning. I, you know, I mean, we, we've been out a lot and on the road a lot, but we've been watching, you know, uh, uh, all the services. But I felt good this morning when I heard the minister in, in music. Good. So be not ashamed of the gospel. We are conformed to this world and want to be accepted by the world. But let me show you something. God says, be in the world, but not of the world. And in John 17, 19 through, 9 through 14, talks about that. Now, we're not going to read this text now, but, but we are not loyal, church. How is it that we are trying to go to heaven, but we are serving the devil? Amen. We are all as gods in our own world. You know, this is my life. Ah, you can't tell me how to live it. I'm a God. Well, you know, the devil said that when the eyes of Adam and Eve were open, that now they are as God. Now their eyes are open, and they can see the good and the evil. So before the eyes were open, they could only see the good. But now they can see the good and the evil. So now here we are today still acting as we are some kind of God. Um, we, don't have, we don't have any life of our own. We only have life because Jesus has given us life. Um, when you took the responsibility of a Christian... You were then charged before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. You were charged to preach the gospel. Everybody, even if it hurts, you got to preach the gospel. You got to tell me the truth, even if I don't want to keep it. Tell me the truth anyway, because only the truth will set us free. I was speaking with the pastor and he shared with me that he has been dealing with discipleship. And you all know, I wasn't here, but you know the type of pastor that we have. We have a pastor that is on fire for the Lord. We have a hard-working pastor. We have a pastor who will not bag down. I don't care what happens. We have a pastor who, 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 who he, he, even through all of the COVID times, he was still out in the in the streets and knocking on windows, car windows, and passing out groceries, and, 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 and he does not quit. Amen. You know how he is, so he told me that that's what he's been dealing with, and on next week, he said he has another plan that God gave him to do something else, and I thank God because I believe where he's going and where he's taking us, amen, that we all need to go. He's going to have a men's day program. We're going to talk to the men. And men, we need talking to. I will say this, and then I'm going, to, I'm going to close. You see, back during the time of slavery, America brought a person from the West Indies, a man, to teach them how to make a slave. Well, they brought this man over, and what he, some of the things he said to them, he said to them, if you want to make a slave, 
and make him loyal to you, then these are some of the steps you got to take. Number one, take the strongest one you got. Bring him out in front of the whole assembly. Bring his children and his family so they can see what we do to men who disobey the master. Tied his legs to two different horses. Make them go and split him in half so that, so that the mother of his children would say to the children, you better do whatever they tell you to do. You saw what they did to your father. So if you don't do what they tell you to do, they're going to do it to you. So they did it so they could put the woman in charge of the household. So the women became the household uh, icon because she was able to bring order and keep order in the family. It wasn't the man's fault that you've gotten to where you are now. It wasn't your fault, but you are responsible because at a certain time in life, you can get yourself up out of that situation and you don't have to wallow and wander every day back into that same lifestyle. There has to be a time in our lives as men that we reclaim our position and become loyal again to our purpose. It was the man that God created first. It was the man that God gave uh, the information to. It was a man who was supposed to talk to his wife about God's will and God's purpose. But somehow the man failed and the woman went out and went astray. And ever since that time, we have been struggling through thorns and thistles of life. God is saying it's time now to come back. Men, take your place. Take your place in life. Men, those of you with sons and children, when you leave here, call them up. Call them up and help them to get back on track. They got to get back in the driver's seat. In order for them to do it, we got to get back in the driver's seat. I call my sons. I talk to them a lot now because I miss a portion of their lives growing up. There was a time in my life where I messed up as a father and as a husband. But thank God for a woman, amen, that he raised up for me. Thank God for the woman. When I said, Lord, I want a family, God led me from New Jersey down to Alabama to Oakwood University, Oakwood College at that time. He had a woman there for me that would help me through all of the chaotic situations I was going to get through, and then in the end, help me to get to the kingdom. Thank God for Oakwood University. Thank God for God and his leadership in my life. Had not it been for God, I wouldn't be here standing up talking to you right now. And this woman you see would not be sitting here with me today. But she was a woman who would not bend. She was a woman who would not bow. She was a woman who, when I tried to sway her away, she said, no, I'm standing up in the power of God. You will not take me down. Amen. She stood up for God. And God told her, listen, I'm going to put you on the burner for a minute. I'm going to work with him. I've heard your prayer because she got down on her knees after we had some sons and I was gone. She was down on her knees with my children, praying for my children, praying for her husband, telling her, letting her children know that God will fix your dad. And God did fix their dad. Thank God for this woman. Men, your woman should be cherished. Your woman is your keeper. Your woman is your protection. Your woman is the, is the uh, I'm going to say the highlight of your family. And I say that 
because your woman has more God in her than any man could ever get in him. It is your woman who can bring about a child. A man can't bring no babies into this world. A woman can extend life. A woman, God made a woman for a purpose. And men, if you're abusing your woman, stop it. Amen. Amen. And so, I'm not going to go any further with that because the pastor is going to deal with the man on men's day, however he will. But what I want to leave with you today is church. God created us for a purpose. Not our purpose, but for his purpose. And that purpose was to glorify him, to connect heaven and earth together in one unit. That's what God wanted. The man wants to be the connecting device that brings heaven and earth together. And the woman was supposed to help him to do what he needed to do. But when the woman fell, I cannot imagine what went on from the time they left the Garden of Eden. I can't remember, I can't imagine how that thing went. I don't know if Adam was angry. I don't know if he was mad. I don't know if they fought. I don't know what happened. But I do know as a result of that thing in the, in the Garden of Eden, here we are today. We are blind. We are wretched. We are naked. We think we have need of nothing. And we have nothing, not even the clothes on our backs. Everything we have belongs to God. We don't have nothing. We can't do anything. We can't make anything. There was a saying one time, a little boy, two little boys were standing out uh, in the field, and they were talking about what their father had. And one little boy pointed to another boy, all the cattle up on the hill, grazing in the grass. And the little boy said to the other boy, you see all those cows over there? Those are my daddy's cows. The other little boy said, yeah, you see the grass that they're eating? That's my father's grass. So it doesn't matter what you have in life, it belongs to God. But he has let us borrow it just for a little time, even each other. One day, I'm going to go. One day, my wife is going to go. I don't know who's going to go first, but I will say this. If my wife goes first, I don't know what in the world I'm going to do. I cannot live on this earth in God without this woman. Amen. Thank God for a Christian woman. I made a promise to her. In this life, as long as I live, I will never, ever, ever hurt you in any way, form, or fashion. And I mean that I would die before I hurt her because she is my life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. And so today, church, our lives are supposed to be lived making disciples out of people. Making disciples out of people. Let's continue the work that God has put us here to do. Be loyal to your purpose in life. Father, we thank you. We thank you for life. We thank you for love. We thank you for the Sabbath. We thank you for all of these things because we believe, Lord, that if we can just stay loyal to our purpose, that these things, Lord, would get us home. And we pray that your spirit would not leave us nor forsake us. That you would be with us, Lord, through the good times and through the bad times. And just help us to stay on one accord. So when this is all over, when it's all said and done, save us in your kingdom. And we'll be so careful to give you the praise, the honor, and all of the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. And let the church say amen. 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 And we're just going to ask you to stand. We're just going to do the benediction at this point. Father,
we have done what you told us to do and what you brought us here for. We have worshiped you together today in songs and in words and actions. And now, Lord, as we prepare to leave this place, we pray that your spirit will lead with us, that he will help us to navigate our way back to our home, our places, and that he will help us or to keep the rest of this Sabbath day holy, no matter what happens. And then, Lord, as sun, the sun begins to set, we pray that you will fix our spirits that when we, when we transition from the Sabbath back into the secular time, that your spirit, Lord, will fix us so that as we transition, we will transition, Lord, with you in mind and our hope. And so now, until we meet again, be with us all. Keep us all. Help us to pray one for another and lift each other up and bear each other's burdens. So we thank you for hearing and answering our prayers today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God is Amen. Good. Consider yourself this man. Let the church say Yeah. Uh -huh.